Let me be really clear. I don't want New Zealand to be at level four a minute longer than needed. But equally, there is no plan to move from level four early. I just wanted to be nice and clear on that as it was a question that was raised with me um, this morning. All actions we have taken to date are about minimising the amount of time we are at level four in order to stamp out the virus. And our actions for the remainder of the period in level four will be about doubling down to ensure the gains made in the first half aren't squandered in the second. We are determined uh, to make sure that we stamp out COVID-19. That means broader testing, and in particular surveillance testing, more and faster contact tracing, and strong enforcement of the lockdown rules, and of course border controls. Now is not the time to ease up, but rather the time for all of us to focus even harder on the mission that we have. With that in mind, I want to repeat the rationale for why we were at alert level four for four weeks. First, the virus can take up to 14 days to show signs, so cases we are seeing coming through now can be people who had the virus prior to the lockdown, um, but were asymptomatic. Those people may have passed the virus on to close contacts prior to the lockdown. So we can expect to see these close contacts coming through now and in the next week as well. And of course, these people may have passed it on to others in their bubble or their essential workplace as well. So the lockdown ought to have stopped wider transmission, but we can expect to continue to see cases and context of those cases still coming through. Because of this time lag in the virus rearing its head, four weeks is the minimum time needed to ensure the chain of transmission from these cases is stopped. And it's the reason we were very deliberate and really clear with New Zealanders that it would be four weeks when we went into alert level four just to give everyone that level of certainty. We also need to better understand the cases of community transmission and have certainty there isn't wider presence in the community than we are aware of. This is especially true in areas with low case numbers. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. We need to be absolutely sure we're not missing silent outbreaks. And that is where surveillance testing is so important. You've heard the Director General talk about that and myself, uh, and that is something the Ministry of Health is working on uh, as we speak. We'll be using then the next two and a half weeks to significant, collect significantly better data on the risk of unseen transmission in our community to help inform our decision making about level four and the other levels. But I repeat, there is no desire to be in lockdown uh, uh, for any longer than we need to be. Uh, and we need to do that, of course, for enough time to ensure we have the information needed both nationally and regionally to move out of level four with confidence that we have communities spread under control and that the sacrifices made by New Zealanders will have paid off. First of all, an update on our wage subsidy scheme that is helping to keep people in their jobs connected to their workplace uh, and with an income so businesses can come through this challenging time and keep going out the other end uh, with their workforce intact. A total of 876,000 people so far have shared in $5.3 billion dollars which has been paid out. This is an incredible number when it comes to money we've got out the door in just a few weeks, particularly when you consider that in a number of other countries, their wage subsidy schemes haven't yet started paying out and nor are they scheduled to in many cases for some weeks to come. One of our strong uh, principles in deciding on the wage subsidy scheme uh, was that cash flow was going to be critical for uh, businesses and for their employees, which is why we moved to a mechanism that would enable that as quickly as possible. MSD is still working hard through applications. Uh, in fact, I had a conversation with um, the chief executive over the weekend. Uh, they had hundreds of their workers in working long hours processing applications to support those many employees and those many businesses. Treasury estimates that between $8 billion and $12 billion will eventually be paid out under the scheme, all in support of workers. 
This amount of investment requires a level of transparency, and when Minister Robertson introduced the scheme, he said that a public register will follow. Um, that searchable database um, will be available shortly. Um, that searchable database will enable uh, uh, anyone, any member of the public, but particularly employees, um, to search the uh, company name and see whether or not their workplace um, has been a recipient of the wage subsidy. I want to reflect on a, an issue that has been uh, front of mind for us um, during this period of lockdown, and that's the issue of mental health. I know there are some people who are feeling distressed, anxious or worried at this time, and that is completely understandable. In a short interview that I did with psychologist Nigel Latter um, last week, he made the point that none, uh, uh, none of us, no Kiwi in the country right now would be alone in feeling like that, and that no one should be too hard on themselves um, at this particular point in time. That's why we will tomorrow release campaigns and resources with tips designed to help Kiwis cope with the stresses created by COVID-19, um, not just through lockdown, but beyond that too. These are guided by best practice health promotion and focuses on providing people with the tools they need to be able to manage their worries, look after their mental health and connect with loved ones despite operating from um, their own bubbles at this time. A quick word on stranded New Zealanders. To date, MFAT has facilitated the return of 334 New Zealanders in addition to those who have returned on commercial flights. As you will have seen from the statement made by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the New Zealand government has made arrangements to uh, charter a flight for New Zealanders stranded in Peru to depart the country following agreement with the Chilean government to allow the necessary transit that we needed to get them home. I'm also pleased to report that we were able to extract 11 New Zealanders from strict and extended lockdown conditions in the Tyrrell region in Austria, along with around 20 Australians. The group exited the quarantine cordon on a chartered bus and have now boarded a flight bound for Auckland via Doha. Our diplomats in Vienna worked closely with their Australian partners and we're really grateful for that partnership and for Australia's assistance there too. Together we collaborated with our Austrian counterparts and with regional police and Qatar Airways to help New Zealanders home in a very trying and complex um, situation. We are aware of three more Kiwis who want to return to New Zealand from that same region and our officials will continue to work to help them um, with that uh, exit. These are really complex consular operations requiring close collaboration with multiple governments and authorities, uh, as you can imagine with different countries and different forms of lockdown at present. Um, finally, uh, some very good news from the wider health sector that I wanted to share today. The last patients involved in the Fakare White Island tragedy have now been discharged from the National Burn Centre in Auckland. Uh, the volcanic eruption on uh, December 9, uh, in which um, 21 people lost their lives, set in motion a massive national and international response in which the National Burn Service, which is hosted at Middlemore, was really key. Now, whilst there are still... Um, uh, those who were affected by Fakare White Island eruption still in other parts of our health system. I do want to play tribute to those at Middlemore who played such a huge role in the critical care of so many. I visited um, Middlemore just before Christmas um, and met with some of the staff, uh, met with some of the family, uh, and they do incredible work, very, very difficult work, and you can only imagine the circumstances under which they were working after that tragedy. I want to thank all of the health sector who were involved across the country in that response because we've now reached a really important milestone for them. And despite the situation we find ourselves in now, I didn't want to let that milestone pass without acknowledging them.